Yay, you got it. You're on, Scott. All right. Hey, so can I share my screen real quick? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So this is, uh, oh. Go ahead. I'm going to make you a co-host. Okay. You can do it now. Okay. Uh, Scott Shimamoto, Journey Mortgage Advisors. And um, can you guys see uh, that chart? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so uh, I just want to show you guys what's going on with rates right now. If you look at this chart, the higher this number is, the better the rate. So up here in like December, this is when rates were at like 2.875, 2.75 right in here. And you can see after the new year that this number keeps going down, which makes rates go up. And this big red bar, this is this was at D-Day um, when they had some uh, Fed announcements. And we broke through, see these, these horizontal lines, these are what they call support lines. So every time you break through one of these support lines, there's a chance for it to go to the next support line, which makes rates even, you know, potentially worse. So what we got here, that's when rates were at four, four and an eighth. And now the rates are trying to uh, recover here. But what's happening, what's causing this is inflation. But what might help us is that, you know, Russia, you know, getting into this thing with um, the Ukraine and all this stuff might start, there might be a war, there might be all kinds of negative stuff for the economy if that happens. So uh, I just want to let everybody know that right now we're in very volatile, you know, very volatile place. And if we go below this horizontal line here, which we've been testing the last few days, if it goes down below this, it's going to go like 70 basis points. That means to get the same rate, it would be like three quarters of a point cost, you know, like paying points or whatever. So just all this being said is when you're talking to your um, sellers and buyers, you got to, you know, let them know that this, this rate volatility might cause their, you know, home to be less, you know, you might not be able to get a higher price as if you're buying, if you're selling the house and if you're buying the house, you might not be able to afford as much because rates going up makes you qualify for less. So anyway, just want to give you that update. Um, if you ever want to get into this in more details, please call me. I'll put my contact information in the chat and thank you guys, uh, Cole Banker for um, letting affiliates uh, participate here and i'm going to drop off and go to the affiliate meeting with the aar so thanks a lot guys you're welcome thank you very much um let me see here uh okay i'm unmuted it's always important to know these rates and it's a little scary but it is what it is uh next i like to go ahead and invite john you're up thank you sylvia thank you sure. kelvin it's great to be here and be a part of this office this family um, I hope you had a great President's Day, and I just want to remind you that you can order your reports, and you should order your reports at time of listing. The information is valuable, very valuable, it, and you can find out whether or not you need to use that fire hardening defensive space disclosure car form, which is in our reports. We're the only company with them in the reports. One other thing I wanted to share, I was on the CARPA meeting a couple of weeks ago, and at that time, Gov Hutchinson was talking about that. And there are companies, inspection companies coming out there approaching agents and owners saying that they have to get the inspection and the compliance documentation. In Southern California, it is not true. In Northern California, it's a different story. So if someone comes up to you and says, you have to get that information or I get those things done, it's not true. And if it's in the very high or high, bear, a high fire zones, you're gonna get the form. And the thing that you do is you just give the form to the buyer. You can close your deals, even though it's in a high or very high fire severity zone. The buyer just signs off on it and he gets within one year, the uh, inspection and the documentation done and just holds on to it. He doesn't have to turn it in. No one's gonna knock on the door and saying, where's that compliance documentation? No, you just hold on to it. But within one year, they can do it and you can still close your um, deals on time. The second thing is in the tax report, I was asked by a broker owner, if the private transfer fee is in there and he approached the title person, title person says, I don't know, I don't think so, but I don't know. It would be in our reports if it had been 
um, you know, filed. If, if it had been filed with the uh, county city, then it would show up. If it's not, it won't show up. It won't show up anywhere. It has to be um, filed with the county or the city. I bring you 27 years of experience. Look for more information from your office. We've got some training classes coming up. I wish you a wonderful day. And if you want your NHCs right on, please call John. I'll put my information in the chat. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you, Kelvin. Thank you, John. That was wonderful. You guys are on point. I love that. Um, next who I have here is, oh, hi, Adam. Next who I have here is Sage. Sage is one of our newest affiliates. Hi, Sage. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I hope everyone had a good long weekend. I usually don't take those Mondays off, but I actually did take the Monday off. I did absolutely nothing on Monday. It was fantastic. I needed it. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I hope everyone had a great week and a long weekend. I wanted to talk about the length of the NHG. So as you all know, natural hazard disclosures are an unregulated industry. So every NHG report is written differently. The great thing about my NHG is that we're going to make that report simple and straight to the point. Simple 22 page long report. We're gonna give you a brief description because most of the time, to be honest, realtors are not reading that NHG. And when we want them to read it and where they have to read it or the buyer needs to read it, they don't wanna sit through a hundred pages of nonsense. They're not gonna read anyways. They want a straight to the point description and that's what we have for you. We give you links in case that certain definition has to take you to a government website or a city and county website as well. If you add environmental, it's gonna add um, about eight more pages, actually six more pages. So a residential report is only 22 pages. If you add environmental, it's gonna be 28 pages. So the length of the NHG is super, super important because it's already a tedious report and you wanna get that information simple and straight to the point. Also, whenever you do order a my NHG report, we include that earthquake hazards booklet every single time. So you need that. Just click on it and it's all online. It's ready to go and it's there for you. So other than that, thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate being here and I can't wait to hear everybody else speak. Thank you, Sage. I appreciate you appreciating everybody. That's great, thank you. And next who I see here is Sandy. Sandy, you're up. Good morning, everyone. Hey Sage, I took Monday off too. Never do that either. <laughs> wow, was it nice. Um, want to remind you guys that there's never a bad time to buy a home warranty. And I know people are trying to make clean offers by not asking for a home warranty, but please keep in mind that new home buyers, over 50% of them will have a major system or appliance repair needed within the first year. Keep that in mind when they're making offers that are over asking. It, they need a home warranty. It's a low cost way to help mitigate their out of pocket costs later on down the line. And there's never a bad time to get a home warranty. Within 60 days of the close of escrow, we can honor the same price. And if it's after 60 days, we have other products that are available that are just a couple of dollars more, but you can always get a home warranty, even if it's outside the transaction. Um, have a great day and I'll put my info in the chat. Thank you, that's awesome. And next I see here is Maria. Maria, hi, you're up. Hi, how are you everybody? How's everybody doing? Wonderful, thank you. Good, good. Well, I just wanna give you a quick little story. So I had an order that came in this morning and I was placing an application. The realtor sent me over the RPA <coughs> and put in the body what he needed, et cetera, et cetera. So the dollar allowance wasn't sufficient. And the reason why it wasn't is because they failed to add the extra costs that would need to be for a casita or a guest house or even an ADU. So unfortunately, it went over his dollar allowance to cover, but he'd never mentioned that in the email. Typically, when I get these emailed to me, I will look up the property, see what are the amenities and et cetera, and I kind of look. But in this situation, he omitted that there was an ADU, which is a guest quarters. So please be mindful of when you're making your offers and you have not your cookie cutter single family resident under 5,000 and you have other things that need to be included, reach out to me and let me know and I'll make sure that you have the correct price when you're presenting your, buyer, your offer to your seller. Thank you so much and I'll put my information in the chat and have a great day. 
Thank you. Same to you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, next to I see here is Nicole. Nicole, you're up. Good morning. Thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of your meeting. Uh, happy uh, Wednesday and just wanted to share we have some new prospecting tools as you know the market is red hot and we would love to help you get more exposure so that you can take new listings. If you're interested in learning more, give me a call text or email and I'll drop my info in the chat. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Nicole Menard, Fidelity National Title. You got it. Thank you. Like that whole brick thing going on. It's a little edgy back there. <laughs> Next to I have here is Angie. Angie, you're up. Hi, good morning. Angie Tang, First American Title. Um, we have a ton of data that we can help support your marketing efforts. So whether it be social media farming, whether it be providing data on um, uh, the next sellers or providing data on probates, divorcees, et cetera. These are type of data that we can actually provide and sit down, do a one-to-one -one and talk about all the different avenues in which First American can help you grow your business. We also have different types of market reports. Um, so it could back up um, your data when you're talking to the listing agents, or listing agents, the <laughs> listing sellers, um, so that you can be able to uh, talk a little bit more fluidly about the different types of knowledge in terms of the data, the market trends, et cetera. Here to help you grow your business, Angie Tang, First American Title. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate that. Hi, Annie, you're up, Annie. Oh, hi, um, good morning. This is Annie from Chicago Title. So um, I wanted to share with you first is a title tip. So if you are about to take on a listings for um, under a trust, um, let's say maybe the seller could be overseas and then you wanted to see if there's a provision under the trust for a power of attorney, we would love to help you to review the trust. So make sure, you know, right before you take on a listing, it's going to go into smoothly. So if you ever need to help to review the trust in a, um, you know, power of attorney situation, we would love to help you out. Also for the title part is whenever you're going to help your clients to ask somebody on the title or quick claim, somebody off the title, there are three main things you need to make sure you have it. First is the grantee or the quick claim D. Second will be the legal description has to be on it. The third one is the PCOR form, preliminary change ownership. On top of that, making sure on the left upper corner for the D, you need to make sure you put the mailing address. That's where they're gonna mail the original D back to the, um, the homeowner. That's extremely important. In Chicago Title, we have a different farming materials to help you to um, you know, get more listing. If you need any title assistance, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you, Annie. Appreciate that. Brandon, I feel like I have to stand up and salute you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, this is a background for President's Day, so yes. um, I hope everyone had a fantastic President's Day. And um, I just was going to mention real quick, something that we've added in is a new consolidated um, signature page. And really what that's going to be able to help you with is you won't have to be looking through that NHD report for those um, EQ booklets or the information that typically your, your buyers or sellers are, are looking to really see that's going to give them valuable information. So we've consolidated that to a, a separate page with the signature page that'll make it a lot easier for you to find that information. And then the other thing that I was going to mention too is the data that we get we are not really, buy we're not buying it from a third party. We have a whole geological staff that goes through and makes sure that all of the information within our NHD reports is accurate. And that's really why when it comes to ENO insurance, why we mention ENO insurance and First American, we have 30 million in ENO insurance. So if any of that data is incorrect, that's when that ENO insurance would be necessary. But that's what our geological staff is making sure that every single NHD report that we are putting out there is accurate and correct. Um, if you have any questions on anything within an NHD report, whether it's the NHD um, or the tax, I'm always available. I'll put my info in the chat and I hope everyone has a fantastic week. Thank you so much, Brandon. Appreciate that. 
Next one I see here is Nancy. Nancy, you're up. Good morning. Thank you, Sylvia. I love your background. Thank Looks you. like a little tiny house. Yeah. Um, you know, all the title company, all the other affiliates are here to help everybody. One, one, one thing that I think is very important for the agents to remember, you're bombarded by all this technology, all the things that you need to do to get business. The key to it is to learn one and use it. And I think a lot of my agents say, oh, Nancy, you gave me this. I forgot what it is. I'm not using it. You have to use it. All the things that you learn, if you don't apply it, it's not going to uh, uh, do you any good. But back to basics, call 10 people a day, talk to your old clients, give them an update. And I think people want to uh, hear your voice and talk to you. A lot of email, a lot of texts, and I know that I delete a lot of my uh, communication because it's just taking up too much time. So just focus on the people that you know, focus on their neighbors, your neighbors. And I think step-by-step, step, you're gonna get a lot, a lot of business. But Nancy Chan, 40 years in the industry. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Thank you, Nancy. And you forgot to mention, you're not retiring. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I love it. I was talking to my kids. My kids, my kids tell me, said, you know, you want to go on a cruise when you retire? Where do you want to go? What's your bucket list? I said, my bucket list is see my clients every day. It's still my bucket list. Thank you. And um, Sylvia, I have a question yeah. that one of the NHD people might be able to answer. The private transfer tax, are they in the NHD? I know that certain project in Azusa has it. So I think this is something that I think agent will want to know. What When I get a Let's listing somewhere, it. where is the private transfer tax listed at? Anybody? Nancy, I just, I just spoke about it. You're I wasn't here. Sorry. I know. Okay. Anyway, it is in the NHD tax part of it. If mm -hmm. it was registered or, you know, filed with the county city. If it has it been, it won't be in the title. It won't be in the NHD. Yeah. So did Peter call you last night, yesterday? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. I love it how you can all jump in and just answer those questions. And yes, John, you did cover that. But the trick is that it has to be registered in order for it to be on the NHD private tax section. Great. Next, who I see up here is Unita. Unita, you're up. Hi, good morning, everyone. You need a Wu from Home Warranty of America, your 13 months home warranty. I just want to let you know, we did add the rekey into our plan with the telephone line. So if you guys have a closing, feel free to give us a call to get your house rekey. And also I want to remind everybody else too on the RPA, whoever you choose on a home warranty, please put that particular name of the company along with the rep, because we run in a lot of problems that, you know, the other side will order it or things like that. We do have a territory that we um, need. So if you can do that, that'd be really grateful for all of us. So thank you again. Um, if you need any help on the home warranty, I'm here to help you anytime. Thank you. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. I'm scrolling through here to see if I, oh, there's Pam with her big smile. Pam, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Pam with American Home Shield Home Warranty and NHD. Um, I wanted to touch briefly on, on roof real quick because Hopefully it's gonna rain a little bit. Um, our roof coverage is $100 and we cover up to $1,500. It's not just the thousand in claims, it's up to $1,500. But if water seeps in the bottom or seeps through the windows, our last um, heavy rains about a month ago, I had a lot of calls on that. That is not a covered item. I don't know if we have a homeowner's insurance on this call, but I don't think it even covers homeowners as well. But also, um, the NHD, um, uh, John is, is completely correct on that. And I just want to make sure our $50 promotion with environmental is going to go through 2022. Just found that out yesterday. So take advantage of that. Save your dollars from your sellers. Just send me the email and I can do it and you'll get it in you know one minute time. So be safe out there. Thank you so much for letting me be on today and uh, stay healthy. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Pam. Question for you really yes. quick. Uh, can we get clarification on what's not covered? Are you talking about the water that seeps through the window? So if there's any window damage? Yes. Yeah, so anything structural of the rain coming through windows because the windows aren't done correctly or seeping through the floor, that is not covered under the home warranty. Only if you have roof coverage and you're having a roof leak that's when it would have a covered. 
and the coverage is $100 for roof. And a little sneak preview, um, starting in April, I will talk about it more in March, but our um, complete plan is going to comp uh, already cover the roof. So that's just going to be some additional items in the complete plan. But yes, if that answers your question, nothing structural when water comes through windows and floors. Thank you so question, much. I Sylvia. appreciate that. Thank you, of course. Okay, and I think I covered all the affiliates. Is there an affiliate that joined in a little bit after that I may have missed? I think did Lisa talk already. Um, Lisa, no, Lisa has. Oh no, Kendra. Not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kendra. No, Kendra has not. You are going. To, it's Kendra's first time. Kendra's going to be introduced by you, and um, we'll get her going. So I'm giving you the spotlight to give Kendra the spotlight. I want to uh, introduce you guys to our brand ambassador, everybody. And Kendra has been um, speaking really closely and working along with Sylvia and myself. Uh, teaching us a lot about the Cool Banker corporate uh, tools provided for everybody, as well as uh, all the cool technology that we have supplied. And she's offering to even come in and pop in and, and kind of highlight a few of the tools from Cool Banker at the mycbdesk.com website. So if you haven't been utilizing your access and login, there's so much great benefits in there. Um, most recently, the newest update I've told you guys about is the Microsoft Office 365 license for you as a user to go ahead and use all the Microsoft tools as a free company benefit with uh, your affiliation with Cobalt Banker. And there's all a lot of other cool, great things in there. So we're going to start implementing and really getting back to the fundamentals of learning these tools. Uh, I don't want to steal her thunder. So without further ado, Kendra, you want to introduce yourself to the group and uh, share some uh, tips for us for the coming weeks? Yes, thank you. Thanks, Kelvin. Thank you, Sylvia. And thank you, everybody, for your time this morning and, and having me be a part of your meeting. Um, I love to hear that a few people in this industry actually took Monday off because I feel like in this industry, nobody takes days off. So <laughs> kudos to you. Um, yeah, the Cobalt Banker brand being a full service brokerage, we have so much to offer that sometimes people um, and agents <laughs> and everybody have no idea what we have to offer sometimes because there's so much of it. Um, but, you know, diving in small bite-sized chunks at a time is really great because then you get an idea of something that you, you might, that might be really useful for you or, or something that might not be very useful. And you could just kind of push that to the side and, and keep to the forefront what's going to work best for your, your business and, and, um, and growing your business. Today, um, I don't want to take much of your time, but today I would like to just show you CBX Buyer Locator, which is one of our tools that is included in Coldwell Banker, um, mycbdesk.com. So that's how you would access that. Is, is there a way, um, Sylvia, you mind if I share my screen? Not at all. I think I'll have to uh, be switched over to, uh, I guess, a co-host in order I'll switch to- switch you over. To... Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. And- uh, the CBX Buyer Locator, it's, it's an easy tool to, to go over. It's a quick tool, but you access it again by going to mycbdesk.com and using your vanity login and uh, whatever password that you created. And I, I'm assuming you can see my desk right now. Yes. Okay, great. And, um, and as what Kelvin said about the Microsoft uh, 0365, uh, in order to either switch your account over or to start an account, you would call the help desk, the help center, and they get that going for you. Help center is found right here at this bottom little right hand little question mark here. You could click on call or request help. And that opens up a page with the phone number as well as the email. Uh, so I just wanted to show you that very quickly because if you do wonder how you access that off Microsoft Office 365, there it is right there. Uh, but CBX Buyer Locator, great tool. It's again found on desk. If you don't see it among your apps, you click on this little plus sign, add app. You find your app that you'd like to include, press add, and it will show up on your springboard. If there are apps that you do not use and you just want to have a clean desk, just go ahead and X out at the top right. Remove that from your desk so it's nice and clean and you just see what you like to use. And again, uh, CBX Buyer Locator is a highlighted tool. I'm going to go ahead and just click on that, and that's going to open up another URL. 
I chose a zip code in your area. Uh, so it, for example, if I had an active listing, this is my subject property, and I want to uh, dig up some data uh, in this particular area. So I'm going to put in 91780. Really simple, just click enter. And, or I guess maybe you have to press that little search, search icon, not enter, my quick fingers. So I'm just gonna dismiss this message at the bottom. So the 91780 zip code, my active listing, it's gonna show me a location profile. So the neighborhood has a median age of residence, average family size, average household income. Uh, there's just a lot of information here. It goes down to uh, the people. Uh, into the houses. So it shows you in this particular area it has um, 4,240 rental occupied and 7,000 owner occupied. It also goes through their financial information here. You could click on these little blue uh, eye icons and it shows you um, the challenges or the indifferences that they are facing within that zip code. Uh, and then what the essentially does is it brings up the top 10 buyer matches for this zip code. So it shows you the top 10 areas that people are migrating from into Temple City into this active zip code that I put in here. Um, for time's sake, I'm just gonna show the top one um, or stay on the top one, which is uh, the County of Orange, San Bernardino. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this view all buyer matches. And it's gonna bring up another page that gives me uh, icons and it shows highest match in the darkest green, lowest match in the, in the light gray. I'm gonna click around this one right here. It generally opens it up on the, on the highest um, percentage of the buyer match profiles most likely to buy within um, the next 12 months. And again, you click on these different icons to get the data on the left-hand side. So it shows you stuff like, you know, most visited websites, Google, YouTube, sometimes it's Facebook, sometimes it's Twitter. So it kind of gives you an idea of the general area that these buyers are in and uh, what they use, uh, you know, geographically, demographically. And if you'd like to include this report in your seller presentation, and you found that you'd like to use a couple of these buyer matches, you go to the top left-hand corner here, export file. And what it does is it saves it in this little document holder up here, because if you wanna run multiple uh, locations or multiple areas, you just store them up in there until you're ready to download them. They download into a PDF and you could upload them into your presentation, uh, your seller presentation. And this tool is quite impressive. If I were a seller, and I saw the demographics, the ge geographics and the information, the migration data and where um, my potential agent was going to put their marketing efforts, I would think that this is a pretty cool tool. Um, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer questions, but it seems like for time's sake, um, I'm just gonna leave it there. You can't break anything. So if you log into my CB desk and click on it, put some zip codes in there and look at the data, download some reports. Uh, again, you can't break it to go ahead and just, just look around. Any questions okay. from the uh, agents on anything about the MyCB desk uh, tools? No questions, but I just like to uh, thank Kendra for going over that. It's very important, Kendra. I know you and I have constant sessions, but when it comes directly from the ambassador, um, for lack of better choice of words, what's that saying from the horse's mouth, you know, it, 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 it has a different impact. So hopefully, uh, it's a powerful tool, especially where you see people where they're migrating from into the 91780. I was mm -hmm. laughing when you when you put in the 91780 zip code because the agents that are here, I was thinking, oh man, they're going to see information out there, they're going to jump in their cars and they're going to head out there because they're going. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate that. Oh, I, well, thank you. To, yeah, I don't have any questions. Um, I have one, but um, yeah. definitely take advantage of some of the stuff and at least know what your at your tools are at your disposal guys because it doesn't have to just be a listing presentation tool like like Kendra mentioned this could be where you focus your marketing dollars or maybe you're targeting a specific zip code and you want to buy a territory and get some leads 
Maybe you want to uh, find out and farm in a neighborhood. So there's so many ways you can use this information and maybe target the audience that you want. Um, maybe you're deciding when you want to do open house because it says when people are home, when people are watching TV, that might be a good time to, to be around and, and visit them because they're home. So utilize the tools because it's, it's there for you guys. We're a full service brokerage. My question to Kendra is, let's say I'm a Cobalt Banker agent like you guys, and I really want to know more about what Cobalt Banker provides and I want to know a little bit more about classes and lessons. Kendra, is there anything upcoming coming on in Southern California, wherever Cobalt Banker will be having an event that uh, we're well, invited to? Yes, actually, <laughs> that's a good question. You, yeah. <laughs> we have our first, this is going to be our first event. It's called Level Up with Coldwell Banker, and it's in Pomona, California on March 17th. And the first half of the day is going to be the sales agents uh, rally, and we are going to have guest speakers. We're going to have Liz Geringer. Uh, uh, she is now the uh, chief not only the officer. chief operating officer, but now she is the vice president. So she's got two two roles now. <laughs> and uh, we're going to have uh, Tori Kitchen Jay, who works side by side with David Marine. She's the one that is heads all of our uh, Coldwell Banker commercials and our marketing uh, materials. She's amazing. Uh, we'll have Michael Altnew from Global Luxury. Uh, also, Marlene Fernandez, if you all are familiar with her, she's amazing. Uh, and then, of course, there's going to be myself and another uh, brand ambassador hosting. And then uh, Adam South, who Sylvia and Kelvin had the pleasure of meeting. He's going to be um, uh, focusing on um, leveraging the tools and the learning information that we have. So whether it's ongoing agent training or agent training on the tools that we offer. Uh, we also have uh, classes that are not affiliated with the tools, uh, such as like Outlist, Outlast, Sphere of Influence, uh, um, business planning. These are all uh, facilitated uh, or used to help agents grow their business. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're very passionate about that. And we have amazing people on our team that have been in the industry for many years um, on, in all facets, whether they were selling real estate or owning brokerages or managing brokerages. Um, so they're very familiar and have lots of great uh, advice, lots of great tools to leverage. And not only that, it's going to be a really fun networking opportunity uh, at, the Cold, at the Level Up with Coldwell Banker in Pomona. We have an early arrival time at 9 a.m. because we know how traffic can be, uh, but we have a 10 a.m. sharp start time where Liz Geringer is going to kick that off, kick the morning off. So the early arrival time will have coffee water uh, photo opportunities we'll have a step and repeat so it should be a lot of fun <laughs> okay get some of social that. media for selfies going on yeah uh, yeah that sounds great uh so we can attend this in southern california at the pomona fairplex how much is it going to cost this guy uh kendra nothing just just um however yeah i mean gas prices are really high right now so <laughs> it's going to so cost you at the pump i guess <laughs> okay it yeah. costs us our time and it's gonna be well worth it guys I, I, these yeah. questions were loaded I, I i i wanted to just make sure you guys know that coal bank is providing us such great yeah. value and yeah learning from some of these corporate leaders who provide valuable insight not just locally in california it's more important to take a take a pulse of what's going on regionally nationally, internationally, and I'll speak a little bit towards uh, what's going on in our economy. So thank you, Kendra. Anything else before we end? Um, I'd like to say something, Kendra, if it's okay. Yes. Um, yeah, so I did mention everything that you shared over on our WeChat, because we have, as you know, we have a little community going on on WeChat as well. So um, I've been trying to get our Coldwell Banker gear ready, but it, I, I don't think realistically it's going to be ready for March 17th. And I know it's uh, St. Patrick's Day and the green color is in place, but what I'm trying to uh, influence, how I'm trying to influence our group here is to at least wear the colors, the colors of Coldwell Banker and show up with a lot of pride over at the um, conference. I'm excited and um, yeah, we're aiming for at least the mighty dozen to show up. I love it. I love it. Yeah, we're, we're going to have a few giveaway bags with some swag and Coldwell Banker um, tchotchkes, I guess, is how you know, if it. you would have started off like that, maybe. <laughs> maybe everyone will be lighting up. Okay, yeah, let's get this yeah. registration. We'll send out the registration links uh, in a little bit this week. Okay, because yeah. it's already coming Sounds up great. next month. 
I'm looking forward to spending that day with everybody. So thank you again, Kelvin and Sylvia for having me on this morning. Thank you, Kendra. It's a pleasure. And also, we were so happy to meet Stephen Dinopoli, um, the growth strategist yesterday. Kelvin um, brought him over to meet me and there are a few agents here that met him. So it's nice that all the big shots from back east are making it through our front door. Yeah, yeah, they're coming out to the warm California coast. Yeah. <laughs> I know it is great. They're great people. And Steve is awesome. I'm glad you had an opportunity to meet yeah. him. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me this morning. You're welcome. You're welcome. See you next time. And then I'm going to start my slides, guys. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on in real estate. And it's important. And I'm thankful that you guys are all here to listen in because I want to give a little bit of a as, a, as an economist background major, uh, I feel that it's important to have a little bit of discussion of what's going on. So I'll have a section where we're highlighting a little bit of what's going on versus home appreciation versus our currency depreciation. And I think that's an important discussion that we all understand very, very well because we're providing uh, invaluable consultation services to our clients, whether it's a buyer or a seller. You guys are getting asked this question because I know you are. When is this frenzy? When is the home prices going to uh, stop going so, so crazy? Yeah. When will prices become more affordable? When is the supply finally going to get fixed? When are we getting more affordable housing? They're going to ask you questions like, what's going on with the interest rates? When is it going to rate hike? So I want to have a discussion on all of this stuff. I want to equip you with all of the vocabulary and the, the really the, the jargon to share with your clients and break it down to a, a way to get your client to either A, to make a decision to proceed or to, to really continue forward on ho hopefully selling or buying with you. So I think it'll be a, a great exercise for us, uh, but I'll start with our weekly slides. You guys see my screen right now? Yes. All right, great. And yesterday we experienced a very in interesting day. It was February 22nd of 2022. So a lot of that too is going on there. Pretty, pretty interesting. It's going to be another crazy year. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed your Valentine's Day last week. This is our quote for today. What we want for others doesn't work unless they want it for themselves. Right. And I always believe in this because I'm not a salesperson. I don't want to sell someone something that they don't want. That's not my, that's not my you know, uh, style of business. And it shouldn't be yours either. We don't want to push something on another or a product that they don't need. Let's instead consult them of what's going on, listen to their financials, listen to their home and their family situations. And everyone has unique backgrounds and, and different work experiences or different types of income. Give them the great consultation in the point where they become convinced themselves that it's time to buy or it's time to sell. It's time to move, get out of California or let's find somewhere more affordable, or maybe it's time to finally stop renting and let's start putting some equity in, and, and payments into our own pockets. So I think it's very important when you share your news to phrase things, to make them think. Don't tell them the answers, make them give them the answers, okay? So they asked me questions like, what do you think home prices are going up or down in 2022? And, I, and before I give my answer, I, I hear I ask them back, what do you think? Right? Because I want to hear from them. I want them to, to really, if they want to hear and get into a discussion with me, I want them to become starting to think in their own brain, what, tr what kind of triggers and signals are they seeing? Okay. And Scott already showed us in the beginning in, uh, about the mortgage rates. That's just one of the triggers that we should keep a pulse on is the mortgage and the finance rates. Interest rates, whether he said it was, it was bumping up and uh, going crazy, where the pricing power has come to a very, they called it the uh, barriers of entry. So uh, Scott used that word again. But anyway, once you hit a barrier, it will open up a resistance barrier to the next level. This is how it works in stocks and charts when you, when you need to be able to analyze these things. It's important to see that Yes, the interest rates are, are getting more expensive to borrow, okay? People are probably getting somewhere close to 3.875 or 4% for a 30-year fixed loan. But that shouldn't discourage someone from buying because interest rates at 4% still is attractive. Yeah. I mean, 
you're borrowing and some people are paying their credit card bills. And I've talked to so many people about how much are you paying on your interest APR rate when you carry your balance and you don't pay your full statement balance? And they go, yeah, I want to keep a balance because I, I, you know, I, I just don't want to spend it all and pay it off. I want to build my credit. But technically, you're probably paying somewhere about 20 to 29 percent on the interest of, the, of what you're carrying if you don't pay off your full statement balance. And that's very high. So just to give you that, you know, just, just to compare, I'd rather pay off all of my credit card bills and take more money in borrowing it through a 4% mortgage. Okay. So keep that, to, keep that, keep that in mind because you can spread that borrowing over 30 years. So I'm going to give you a little discussion, but just, just, it's important to learn how to consult them, your clients, where they really, as a, maybe you're giving a, a discussion to your clients. The couple starts going, you're, everything you're saying makes sense. Yeah, why the heck are we renting for the past five years? We missed out on all of this home appreciation. We missed out on, on, on all this potential growth in, in really setting themselves up for success. And as an inspiration, I'm just telling you, I mean, real estate has been something that's been near and dear to my family. And we, we, since we jumped into real estate since an early age, and my father are, are taught me this as well, about building real estate and how land is always something that you can never replace. It's something that is tangible. It's an asset. And yes, it's still relatively liquid, especially in today's market, you can sell something in the first week. So I'm just telling you that it's, it's important for us to teach this to others before it gets too late. And what do I mean boy, when it's getting too late? Okay. Real estate right now we think is expensive. It's high right now. Right. But we're in a different marketplace than ever before, because back in the before the 2000, there was no MLS. OK, uh, we started implementing the MLS early on in 2003 to 2005. We started just getting entries into data recorded online for agents to see. But back then, it was a whole different animal. Real estate was you could just knock on your neighbor's door and you found that they were doing a garage sale and they were planning to sell. You try to strike up a deal and boom, you got a, you got a property just through word of mouth or through an agent referring you that property because everything was written in a big giant phone book. In this day and age, information is so transparent. You know, even the commissions that buyer's agents are receiving and being offered by the listing brokerage is transparent by NER, clear, clear cooperation policy. So what does that mean for you as agents and realtors? That means that if there's so much people knowing what the price and the values and neighborhoods and they could research so many things, investors are now jumping into real estate. Ever before, they're fearful of the stock market. They're fearful of the economy and maybe even wars going on with Ukraine and Russia and America jumping into World War III or maybe something with China. Now, if we have this situation and, and where investors are afraid of volatile markets, they're gonna, they're gonna buy into different asset classes of real estate, REITs, trusts, uh, different, you know, they're gonna do 10 exchanges and they're always gonna be looking to have more rental properties because that has always been since the beginning of time, the one of the best investments for any family. So um, if you open up all of your dialogues this way, hopefully you'll get buyers. I mean, buyers will also believe in want to buy themselves. So I'll get into that a little bit more when we get into the data. Social distancing and COVID protection protocols are still in place. Everyone's got to wear your mask indoors and respect one another. If you haven't gotten your booster, go ahead and schedule it. You can buy test kits nowadays at your local favorite convenience store and uh, continue to join us for our trainings and our sales meetings. I want to give you the upcoming calendar so you guys can check it out and register in advance so you can be keeping a pulse from my perspective and the company Cobalt Banker Dynasty and all of our affiliates. You can hear a lot of the great things that we're sharing for you, okay? Because we're all involved in different networks and different listening to different seminars. So I love hearing everyone's opinion on what's going on and that allows us to make more educated decisions. We got a networking event going on with uh, the YPN at AAR, and that's a free time to uh, meet some of your colleagues and learn what tools, tech, and apps they're using and how they're getting their new business. 
CRMLS training as well. If you want to learn a little bit about commercial, my YouTube private channel is listed over here. And you can always download these, these slides at your own time using the Dynasty Agent resources. Uh, but I definitely want to make sure you're uh, taking a class on the new RPA so you're not a stranger to all the new changes. It's very important to write up a contract and it's very stressful trying to learn all of this when you're trying to write it up for your buyer for the first time and you haven't learned this yet. So don't put yourself in a stressful position. Take a class on the new RPA. Learn what strategies and techniques we're doing in writing offers. Don't forget, uh, uh, there's a two-phase progress, uh, two-phase steps for the LA County Tenant Protections Resolution, recently adopted and extended, providing tenants more protections that will phase uh, from now to May 31st in phase one for unincorporated areas in Los Angeles. And if you're in a city jurisdiction, then this does not apply. Uh, if you're in phase two, they're starting to allow more landlords and owners who bought after June 1st uh, certain requirements that allows a buyer who bought after June 30th to move in and vacate a unit for own immediate family usage. So uh, if you don't know this and you have all these questions on how to evict the tenant, I, I'm simply going to tell you, we are not property managers, guys. We are realtors. That is a whole new avenue of consultation services that they should talk to an eviction attorney or a property manager on evictions and vacating a unit for their own personal use. It's, it's not something that I want you to be, I want you to learn it and be sharp and share resources from government and state sites, but I don't want you to be giving them uh, precise instructions unless you know this at the, at the back of your hand. And even I personally don't know all the, the nuances, nuisances, nuances to the details for the qualified requirements for an owner to move in. I just know it, it can't even be a cousin. It cannot be a, a specific uh, in-law. It has to be an immediate family. So your nuclear family. Uh, talk to and read up on all of these articles and read specific cities. There's a whole bunch of cities that have a specific red toll ordinance that will override the LA County one, okay? Uh, so if you wanna learn my content from the company on, we're sharing all of our videos. So uh, now it's time to discuss a little bit about where I wanna spotlight uh, appreciation versus depreciation of a dollar. And I think it's important to understand what's going on not only in California and Southern California, but nationally speaking and globally speaking, what is going on with home appreciation and how that is compared and different to the depreciation of dollar. First, the definition of appreciation. That is when an asset has increased demand, and there's a couple of different things that will cause appreciation, but when there's an increased demand for an asset, for example, during the pandemic, we experienced a demand for single family homes versus condo and townhomes or being in a metropolitan area like uh, multi high rises. So people wanted yards, they wanted privacy, they wanted to spend more time to do Zoom business meetings at home. So a lot of buyers moved from urban areas to suburbs looking for, uh, there's a high demand for that. Then you have a, also appreciation that occurs when there's a supply of an asset and this is even pre-pandemic. When I was at the car director meetings in 2018 and 19, we were supposed to be building 250 to 300,000 units per year and in California. And we were only reaching goals of 90 to 100,000 units built per year. So we are well under uh, our goals of creating housing. So therefore we have an artificially low supply of housing, that's even before the pandemic. This is not new news. I've reported this to you guys five years ago, house supply is so limited. And so I'm just telling you that this is artificially creating a high home appreciation value that we're experiencing from last year and this year as well. And that's not going away. There's still not enough units being built. Then you have inflation that causes inflation, uh, appreciation. 
And inflation uh, recent reports are saying somewhere around, uh, what is it, seven and a half percent, seven and point eight percent of uh, inflation of the economy. And that's really, really high because our target goal should be within two to three percent as a healthy normal inflation year over year. So we're more than double our inflation goals. And the Fed has announced that they're very concerned. They announced that they thought it was going to be transient, uh, which means temporary. Uh, but I have other reports to tell you that it might not be. The other thing that causes appreciation is the interest rates. And yes, we're experiencing since the past month, Frank, uh, Scott showed us the, the whole chart, how interest rates highly since the Fed meeting where they said it's less, it's not, they now said we are actually telling you it's not transient, it's not temporary, it's gonna be a little bit more serious and we're gonna be looking into three or four rate hikes in 2022, get ready guys. And that's when all of the uh, 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 interest rates started rising significantly. So now we know what the appreciation and kind of how that's defined, okay? Let's talk about the de depreciation factors, okay? All of, all of the factors we all experience and see, it, all of this makes sense, okay? The low supply, limited inventory, lots of rising interest rates and in the inflation. This is the home appreciation has been occurring for the past two years, and we all understand this pretty well. It makes sense. But when you get into the depreciation factor, that's where I need you to understand all of these mechanisms that are going behind the scenes that you're, you're kind of, you hear it, it goes in and out, but not really understanding. Our currency is being depreciated significantly. And you can see that through, highly see that transparently through the inflation going on in your marketplaces and your cost of goods and services that you, that you, 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 you do. Um, for example, gas prices right now, okay? Gas prices are at five dollars uh, at the pump if you're looking for premium, and that's pretty much record highs. It's, it's we haven't seen such high prices ever. Even the Fed says we're going to tap into our Federal Reserve so we can lower the prices of gas. So they did that urgently and took out uh, you know tons of barrels of gas from our reserve to provide more supply. Guess what that does to at the pump. It only reduced it like five cents, three cents at, at the pump. So we are still, it's not nothing, anything to, to jump for joy about. We're still going to have these really high gas prices. And that's probably going to lead to more uh, eyeballs looking into electric vehicles in the, near, in the near future. The inflation you're seeing at the market, like cost of beef, steaks, and uh, milk, and groceries, and vegetables, all of that stuff is where the producer is experiencing higher costs to produce those goods. Their water bills are going up. Their food costs are going up. Their land cost is going up. The producer has higher insurance premiums. So guess what? They're going to pass that appreciated cost down to the consumer level. By uh, It's going to be a higher cost to buy that product. The cost of labor is ex more expensive, guys. And not just labor at the factories and manufacturing plants. Labor is going uh, higher for companies uh, everywhere because the, the reports do reflect, uh, yes, our unemployment rates is being worked on. More people are going back to work and they're getting a higher wage compared to years past. And you couple that with all of the CARES Act and pandemic money and uh, uh, different types of uh, levels of support given to consumers, given to businesses, the bailouts, all of this has been what's called federal government providing um, much more currency into the market. And that supply of currency simply is by just giving people and wiring checks into their accounts. And you see a much, I think the global supply I, I can't fact check this for sure, but the YouTuber just said in, uh, in the video I watched, the global supply, uh, the, the uh, dollar, in terms of the American dollar currency, the supply of that dollar, physically the tangible uh, money that's being printed has increased by 40, the 40% 40 of, the, of the supply 
has been given out just in the past three years. Okay, so in the last, you know, since the beginning of time, all of this money that's been churned out and printed and given out as um, child tax credits or various types of uh, programs like PPP loan or e uh, economic disaster loans, these monies increased our supply. It's 40% of our supply currently. How is that impacting us as Americans and as citizens? When you have a high supply of dollars, it makes sense. The dollar depreciates, okay? That dollar is less valuable. You, the, even, even the, the Big Mac and the, uh, the Whopper used to cost a dollar back then. Now you're spending four or five bucks for just a simple sandwich and that's not even the combo. So our dollar doesn't buy us as much anymore. You guys know it, you get it, you feel it. But how do we explain this to the consumer and what does this do? Well, people are saying, yes, uh, yeah, they understand it. They see that prices are going up. Uh, yeah, then they go, oh, but that's because it's a trade wars. There's supply chain issues. Yes, it's, 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 it's really high now, it's, it's temporary because of this and this and that. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm here to tell you, I think it's less, yes, the global supply chain issues have been a factor in getting uh, more favorable goods and businesses are having to stock up and just, it's, it's a nightmare in doing logistics right nowadays. So I do think that they are correct partially, but what they're also forgetting to understand is this is not gonna be transient. This is not temporary. The cost of those goods and services aren't going down because labor is not going. Price of labor is not going down. Materials are not coming down, and so I feel the cost of these goods and services. This is more permanent and likely to even increase again further, because we're only at the beginning phases of people taking notice of how depreciated the dollar is getting, and how much inflation is going on, and. When, you, when I look at the question, then this, this comes down to the primary question. What's going on in real estate and are prices going up or down? Going back and circling back to this, I'm gonna say, I feel that even we might be close to a recession in terms of the definition, okay, of which is slower economic growth, which we do have. I still feel that the home prices are going to appreciate greater in the next few years and beyond because there seems to be a clear trend that the movement and the forces behind the scenes and the Fed are going to continue to just go ahead and solve problems by increasing the debt and depreciating the dollar and prices of goods are going to continue to climb and escalate because that's the only way really to solve what's going on in our global economic issues. They're, they, they've already allowed and printed too much money in circulation out there. You can't take that money back. Okay, it's already been, it's already been gifted to the people. It's already been right, written off. It's already been added to the 30 billion, the $35 billion trillion dollars of debt that we have. So the depreciated dollar is gonna be uh, a, a trend movement upwards and this is going to be having ripple effects in our economy in, in many different ways okay so you're going to see rents escalate even more people who are looking to rent and you're going to see a lot of landlords incurring higher insurance cost premiums in higher cost of labor and supplies and repair costs for a new roof or new flooring and carpet all of those are going to have higher costs and they're going to pass that on to the tenant. You have more investors being jumping into the game, especially in Southern California. So investors don't, you know, don't mismanage their, their funds as much. They're going to take it as a business. Investors run and own many properties and they get consultations and they're going to do evictions and they're going to get market rents. So that's going to jack up prices for rents for the foreseeable future to the point where a lot of tenants are gonna be displaced or moved out of and, and, and to the, I move out of the area. You're gonna see um, wages increase, but not to the level of how much the cost of living is gonna be increasing. So yeah, people are getting slight dollar increase in their minimum wage and this and this and that, but their income is not gonna 
be anywhere close to how much overall, and we, this is macro speaking, overall it's not gonna be uh, outweighing the cost of all of the goods and services they provided. You see, when the government printed 40% of our money circulation in the last three years recently, there's a lot of people out there with a little bit higher dollars, higher bank accounts and savings right now. And whether they gained it through the stock market, through some of this, through stimulus, there's a lot of money in the circulation that they're looking to invest. Real estate is still one of the best tax benefits. A lot of the ben uh, 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 a lot of the movement towards real estate right now is triggered because there's still a lot of favorable tax uh, benefits. Not only is that, it's just, it's just you know you have control over your asset, okay? You can sell it anytime. You can uh, put tenants in control, who you put in there and what you're gonna charge for that rent. So it's a stable uh, asset that should appreciate over time. And it's, it, you know, I don't see that changing, okay? That's what the beauty of real estate, that what we, what we do and what the services we provide for our people, everyone who we've helped in the past buy property and, and do real estate, they, they probably are better off than those who are still renting. Okay. Now, lastly, I do want to share a little bit about um, the depreciated dollar, the ripple effects. With this high supply of money in circulation, people are looking for better investments, things that are going to uh, provide a higher return than the 7% uh, inflation that we're experiencing. Okay. So there's very few areas to get guaranteed rates and return that are greater than 7%. Because if you're getting letter, better, less than 7% on return on your money, let's say you put it in the bank for a half percent of interest, which is you're getting right now, you are going to be year over year, your, 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 borrowing, your, your, your money is going to be depreciating so much to the point where uh, your, your money is not churning for you. You're losing money, even though it's parked in the bank. Okay. So that's why there are people out there highly looking for better investments. So the ripple effects that we're going to experience is not only consumers looking for homes and looking for this asset and trying to lock in a 30-year rate of an attractive 4%, but you, they're having to compete in a marketplace that's transparent in which investors and so many people with high, who have uh, what you call refinance their properties, taken a lot of their uh, equity, put it into cash, and now people have some income to really compete in this marketplace and buy properties, other more properties. And it's not going to, it's going to be a cyclical downturn where it's going to be very tough to, to purchase property. Okay. So I do believe home values are going to in terms of the dollar amount, will be continuing to climb up, okay? And that's not necessarily because the home has gotten any better or because of any improvements or it's not necessarily because of the supply. It's really because the dollar is depreciated so much that it has to, you know, uh, that, you know, how the, how the Whopper example or, the, or whatnot, that same dollar doesn't buy you a, a burger anymore. So, that same dollar is not going to buy you or that same million dollars is not going to buy you a, a nice house anymore. You're going to need to pay 1.5 or $2 million for a beautiful house because of the depreciated dollar. And so many people have the net worth to go ahead and compete in an overbid against you. So it's going to get tougher and tougher as the years come for renters to go ahead and buy a uh, home, unless they, unless they change and get a high income or something like that. So, that's just my perspective. This none of this is financial advice or any of this is to give to your clients to to say give as fact. But this is with the forces and signals that I'm experiencing and, and witnessing that are I'm 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 seeing this kind of trend movement in, in in various reports. Okay. Any questions on this part? No, Calvin. I feel like I'm in a college session here, and I appreciate you offer so much value to all of us, and I appreciate this information. I realize I took way too long on this, so I'm, I apologize, but it, it, it's important to understand that everyone has an opinion on things. Okay, thank you, Sylvia. But I'm just going to say, <laughs> um, you know, the sentiment from February to January hasn't changed. Consumer sentiment towards real estate is almost the same. But 72% say, is this a good time to buy a home? 
only 28% say it's a good time. Okay, that's okay. 70% say no, it's not a good time to buy. Is it a good time to sell a home? 60% say yes. Okay. And where do home prices rise in the next 12 months? It's 50 50. You know, it's very close. Some people think it's going to go down, some people think it's going to go up. And I, I respect people's opinions. But when you look at things, um, will the interest rates fall? You know, two thirds of the population say, hell no, it's going to go up. But when you look at the big picture, when you compare in 2020, do you think it's a good time to buy a home? 28%, this number is actually higher than it was in the past. If you look in 2018, 19, and 20, most people were saying it's not a good time to buy in 18, 19 as relative to today. Guess what? <laughs> Everyone who bought in 2018 and 19 made, made a lot of money. It probably made 20, 20 to 5% um, re, uh, uh, appreciation on their home because you know it's a quick $100,000 $200, greater than whatever they push, purchased for. So I can tell you, even though they felt it was not a good time back then, it turns out when you look at the foresight, uh, well, I'm sorry, when you're looking back, it turns out those who did take the risk were gonna be rewarded. And when people have fear, and when there's a lot of frenzy and panic in stocks and in real estate and in life, that tends to be where you have the most significant gains because when there's the most risk, that's probably the most upside as well. You'll experience this in life. You don't, the people who are the most successful, this is a quote that I want you to understand. The people who are most successful are not following the flock of sheep. They are doing the things that, and they're leading and they're in the, the front. They're kind of uh, taking the most risk. So if you're seeing everyone investing their money into Bitcoin or this and this and that, they're, you're too late. Okay, you, you should be in the front or when you see the most risk, when you see the most people selling, that's actually the time to buy. Okay. Anyway, um, that's that. Any questions on that? I'm going to just stop my screen and I don't know. I, 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 I had another slide I wanted to share, but uh, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna cut this shorter. Let's get into our um, meeting minutes. So when you're using the um, tennis screenings and you're gonna find a rental, I highly encourage you to use Rent Spree because of the fact that you get to eliminate yourself from the questioning and application process. Check our social media, Facebook and social, uh, Instagram for all of our newest listings and updates and all the gorgeous content we're putting out. And um, I have my YouTube channel for classes. Make sure you register your listings and stay in compliance with CRMLS and the clear cooperation policy. And uh, if you have questions, anytime you have a new listing, just ask Sylvia and myself uh, how the days and deadlines we need to um, Make sure you're you're not getting any violations. So I want to make sure you're you're well protected. Congratulations to our new listing over here by Lawrence. He's got 3909 Merced in Baldwin Park, 758,000. Uh, this is a nice single family, four beds, 2.75 baths. Henry Liu's got an Arcadia beautiful home in a hot location on Sixth Avenue in Arcadia. This is only, a, this is, wow, 1.25, and you get 11,574 square foot lot. That's not too shabby for an almost 1,500 square foot home in a great location. So talk to Henry if you have someone else looking for an Arcadia, single family. That's probably the lowest listing Henry's ever had. Congratulations, Henry. <laughs> not, not a condo, lowest listing. But uh, I do think this is actually priced attractively given its lot size. Steve has a nice El Robia Avenue, unit A, end unit. This is a three bedroom, two and a half bath, 1293 square foot townhouse, only 600,000, very affordable. This should go quickly. Even El Monte is selling guys. So uh, for 600,000, go for that. You got a beautiful condo. This is, this is very, uh, this is a hot listing in terms of this location. So talk to Julie if you have anyone wanting to go to Long Beach. This is right by the promenade, uh, unit 519. I've seen the photos. It's gorgeous. Top floor, 
good views and uh, 720,000. You're walking distance to the beach. So where can you get a, a house and live up in a nice newer construction condominium with a beautiful HOA? So talk to Julia. Angel's got a nice, beautiful condo for sale in 85 Commonwealth unit PhD. So we buy this house and you're destined to be a doctor. For 725,000, you can get a two bedroom, two bath, 1350 square foot condo right here in Alhambra. And I guess no one got that joke. Anyway, PhD, I've never seen lettering like that. Um, Angel Lau has another listing over here in condo. This is a beautiful 3218 Willow Creek Road in West Covina. Uh, nice uh, attached uh, townhouse style, 715,000. Three beds, two and a half baths. Very beautiful looking community. 1640 square foot, very large. Nice. Congratulations, Angel. Jonathan Goh has got a new single family listing in Hampshire Court, Pomona. Three beds, two baths, only 600,000. This is pretty affordable for a nice 7,300 lot, 1,584 square feet. You got anyone looking for a house, they don't care where it is and they just wanna get in and get away or maybe they're being evicted by their landlord. Hey, Pomona is up and coming and you can get a whole big old house over here. Talk to Jonathan. Melissa has got a nice affordable home in North Hills, 700,000 for a townhouse, three beds, three baths. Melissa, if you're here, you can pitch it too. And um, if you have anything you want to share details wise, but Burnett Avenue, unit 110. So this is PUD style. I love that it's detached from the neighbors. You got an attractive looking building. Um, I like it. The photos look great. Over 1600 square feet. Anything else, Melissa? Oh, it's already in escrow. We have seven offers. <laughs> Like crazy, I you know, yeah. I was like to say, you put a brand new listing and the first week you will know if you priced it right or not. And yeah. I pretty much, whatever you price it at, you'll get offers, guys. Yeah, yeah, people is standing in line to back up offers. So I'm still have offers coming, but I put it in their contract. I don't want to show anymore. And Too many offers. Congratulations. And to you and your client, awesome. And I got a new listing, guys. This is in coming soon status. It's in the MLS. So I already shared it with you on the WeChat group. It's 2300 Hathaway Avenue, Alhambra. You get a nice big old uh, 9,200 square foot lot, 898,000. And uh, the square footage is 1465 per county records. There's an additional 300 to 400 square feet uh, bonus that was a workshop and a converted area. I don't know, I believe it's grandfathered in. So um, I'm having open house, no, appointment, uh, no appointments, only open house. So Friday, four to 6 p.m., Saturday, 12 to 4 p.m. And any new agents or newer people who wanna learn or how, to, how I conduct an open house, you are welcome to join me at my open house because I will need helpers. I know I'm gonna have a line out the door and I want to hopefully get you experience talking to different buyers out there. This is Helen, before you go on, Jung is going to help you. So make sure you get Jung in there. Okay. Well, great. The, the, this is, I, I'm actually considering and increasing the, the, the price because I, I don't want a ton of people coming. Uh, I don't want, I don't want a hundred people out there. So um, I'm, I'm debating, I'm going to test it out and see, but uh, if, if anyone wants to help and talk to a lot of buyers, uh, call me because I don't want to take any of these buyers. This is going to be, uh, there's going to be like too much traffic that I can't control. Uh, so Friday and Saturday, and uh, it, this will go over asking guys. So yeah, um, just, just let your clients know that sometimes you need to consult your clients on market value. All right, but location is great. And I've been busy, guys. I can't even work my, this open house. So I'm going to have open house on this one the following weekend. This is 2620 New York, Pasadena. New York Drive Cross Street is uh, Sierra Madre Boulevard. This is a great location right by the uh, trailhead of Eaton Canyon Reserve. So if you're looking for a nice 11,000 plus square foot lot in a great area of Pasadena, I got a two bed, two bath, 1567 square foot home. Yesterday, I talked with the tenant and uh, she's very nice and gave me a tour of the entire grounds. 
Uh, this is perfect for anyone. Uh, both of these listings are perfect for anyone looking to add on square footage, build an ADU, um, and or go two story. So if you have anyone looking for a really good uh, affordable single families in great areas, um, this is also a converted garage, guys. Um, so take a look. I have photos of my own. So if anyone has a Pasadena client, just, just ask me. I'll give you the links of the interior photos. I don't have this in the MLS yet, uh, but it will be shortly by the weekend. Congratulations, Calvin. Oh, thank you. I, I got to thank, thank my referral source. So I, I hope yeah. you guys start you know, building your referral source because I, I didn't go out. I don't market and do anything, but I, I have people out there spreading my name out there for me. And you guys need to do that a lot for yourselves as well. Have your family, have your friends, have your network, people that you give services to, like your barber and your hairdresser and your restaurants. Ask them to help you promote yourself because people help one another. That's what's called community. Build a community, guys. Yep. So congratulations on the closers. Uh, Kathleen Wong, she closed on 11631 Missouri Avenue in Los Angeles. This condo sold for 1.6 million. It looks very newer construction. It looks really nice and uh, pretty big, 2257 square feet. Congrats, Kathleen. And very excited for Henry and his closings all the time. He's got this 533 Lemon Avenue in Arcadia. This 3,500 gorgeous beauty sold at 2.09 million. So a nice single family, it looks very green here. This looks like a lot of life in this home. So congrats to the new buyers. Margaret Lee closed on 950 Old Mill Road in Pasadena. This is very close to San Marino area, sold for 3.2 million, gorgeous estate. Um, this is a beautiful home. Sold quickly, 10,000 plus square foot lot and a nice 3,400 lot, uh, square foot area. These are great photos, guys. These are great home, attractive homes. Henry Liu is closing on this single family with a giant 13,500 plus lot single family, 1.77 million. That's not a bad considering you got a 3,600 plus square foot living area. Doreen Avenue in Temple City, five bedrooms, 4.5 baths. So congratulations, Henry, on another closing. Congrats to Kevin. This lot sold 9769 with a single family. Sold for 1.028 million in West Covina. Five bedrooms, five baths, 2,600 square feet. Cameron Avenue, West Covina. Congratulations to the team, Nancy Liu and Michael Liu. This wonderful team closed on 100 Alameda Street in 463 in LA. One bedroom, one bath. 908 square feet. And this one probably closed really quickly because it was only 580,000. So a lot of people were fighting for this. Congrats, guys. Gina Labalardi, this was another hot listing of hers for 888,000. This single family, which is 1,000 square feet, closed. Uh, 8882 Kalita Street, San Gabriel. Great street, great location. Very, very hot property, even if it's a two bed, one bath. People are wanting to buy real estate. They can fix it. They can. They know what their rents are going to be, and they can. You know, this is a very good assets. Um, Julia, congratulations to her closing, one three four two four Francis Quito Avenue, Unit E in Baldwin Park, thirteen fifty square feet, four hundred sixty eight thousand, and um, actually, I was the buyer's agent with her. So congratulations to myself as well. Um, both of us got this closed, sight unseen. So we had this in escrow before either of us ever went into the interior. That must have been a great transaction. Very oh, smooth. I love working with Julia. She's very, very sweet. She knows what she's doing. She introduced me to the tenant and um, helped me take it from there. And my buyer is very happy. He closed less than 30 days and uh, we were quick. Um, and this is kind of like the early bird gets the worm. Okay. It hit the market on day one. I had an offer for her and cause I had an investor. I, my investor told me what their criteria was and they said they're looking for something affordable condo, something to fix her. And I told them, this is the one buy it now. And I wrote an offer. No other offers were there. The owner was motivated and she got the job done. So congratulations to Edgar 420 Lockmere Avenue on La Puente. 
587,000 single family, this three bed, one bath sold. Uh, it's a 952 square feet. So congratulations to Edgar on his beautiful closing. And Julia also has been busy. Uh, this is not the photo. Uh, she closed on five in Haven Street, Ontario. Two bed, one bath, 900 square foot. Uh, There's also a duplex as well. So uh, this the photo is wrong, but thank congratulations to Julia. Julia's on fire. She's on fire. She works hard. Yeah. Um, let's just like the rest of you guys. I know you guys are all here and <laughs> attending the meeting. I know you work hard and you invest your energy in, in, in your business. So I'm, I'm thankful for to have such great professionals with uh, associated with us. Angel closed on 580 uh, Main Street in 317. You guys see this all the time. It's on, uh, you know, uh, near Alhambra. For 920000 this 2,000 plus square foot condo got closed on the third floor. And this child closed on this property, gorgeous San Marino home. I don't know how you guys missed this one, but where can you buy a San Marino home? One to $2 million. It was right here under our nose, 2035 Rose Avenue, San Marino, 1.879. For a large 8852 square foot lot at 1880 square feet. Congrats to Annis. She did an excellent job um, and she was very, very detailed. So she was very helpful to both parties. Um, Melissa Chang sold. Congratulations. 850 Cambon Avenue in Walnut. This five bedroom house has 1753 square feet, single family. Very excited for her closing. Walnut's a good, very good area. And uh, she got this one job, job well done for Melissa. She's a rock star. So uh, does anyone have anything coming soon or want to pitch anything else, needs or wants? Hello, Kelvin. Yes. Yeah, Thank this you. is Jean. I will have a commercial in El Monte coming. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, it's asking 799 and right now have a rental income is 2050. Yeah, I will uh, put it on the MLS today. Yeah. Congratulations, a duplex where you're getting uh, less than eight, you said seven something, 799? Yeah, 799, yeah. A duplex, not bad, I mean. No, yes, it's it not, uh, it's a, a, a commercial. Commercial, oh, I'm on sorry, Petro. Yeah. commercial building. Yeah, Retail. commercial building Retail. on Petro. Yes. Tech Road. Pet road, there's a product, yeah. there's a, there's, there's, there's still a good investment because not you know even if you're not buying a house you can still buy commercial property and on peck road I'm, i think there's a lot of industrial out there so there's still is yes. a lot of people in demand for that so i did remember that thank you uh if you have anyone looking for an industrial or a location for a retail center talk to gene on el monte peck yes. road anyone thank else you. have anything you want to pitch coming soon yep that's it. Thank you. Okay. I have a third listing, guys, in Simi Valley. It's a condo. Um, if, uh, this is a co-listing with Mei Zhang. So if anyone has anyone looking in C Simi Valley, which is next to Thousand Oaks, uh, just let us know. Um, I can give you some photos of the interior. But that's not coming out until the tenant moves out. So that'll be coming out a little bit, uh, two weeks. Okay. Kelvin, is it a condo, you said? Condo in Simi Valley, okay. yes. Okay. And the price is affordable range. It's going to be less than 500000 I believe. So what not, are the HOAs? Can I pitch? I, okay. I, have to find, I have to find out, but um, okay. uh, text me if you want more information on Senior sure. Valley. Thank you. And I have a fourth Thank listing you. in Pasadena coming soon. So if anyone's looking for a single family that's around a 7,000 lot, it's a it's remodeled interior, but uh, definitely a nice property. I think we're pricing it somewhere around 960 uh but this is north of 210 so if anyone wants uh, has a pasadena client uh, i can show you i can already release the address if you guys want it okay um, can you pitch, um uh, am i going to have a listing in a single house in walnut as it's north of valley close to the um mount Sai college i think the owner the owner already bought a new home in ontario so they are moving right now um, I don't know the price, and I think right now probably over 1.35 million. Mm -hmm. um, four bedroom, three bus, and then 2,500 square feet. But basically, I think they are 2,700 square feet because I think the title has less square footage. 
yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's very, it's, it's trouble, it's problematic, but sometimes when counting data doesn't match what's actually there. Mm -hmm. But um, we, we, that's why we use the form SFLS, everyone. The square yep. foot lot size advisory shows that the MLS says this uh, square footage and lot size. County records, realist profile shows this square footage lot size. The appraisal might say this measures at this level or the seller estimates it to be this size. So you can add all these different sources in, disclose it to your client, let them reduce, reduce your liability because you've given this information let them verify the, the square footage or this and that. So um, that's gonna be an issue always, since the beginning of time, there's always things grandfathered in, we don't know if it's permitted or not. And records weren't very well kept in a lot of these mid-century homes and older, okay? So thank you for sharing that, Melissa. Anything else? Well, I hope this was an insightful, uh, helpful, knowledgeable type of session. Thank you for continuing to come back to the weekly sales meetings. I thank you for being here. I thank you for being attentive all the way to the very end. Um, it's gonna be a good year for real estate guys, especially if you're a listing agent. I know I say this every time, but the fact of the game is our business hasn't changed. It's always be a listing agent, go out there, find listings. That's going to make your life much easier. Even if it's tenant occupied, okay? Even if there's repairs or it's a fixer upper, even if you don't know what the, you know, there's, there's some circumstances going on behind the scenes or there's, uh, the seller needs to find a replacement property, take your listings, we'll figure out solutions, talk to your managers. There's, a way, there's always a solution when you think, when you put your brains and, and plan ahead, right? Right. Before okay. we head out, um, I'd like to share something if you're getting close to wrapping up the meeting. Yep. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Kelvin. So um, realtors out there, anyone listening here, assistants, I have a um, book that I'd like to share with you, and it's Leadership and Self-Deception. It's getting out of the box, and it's a really insightful book. Um, not don't think of yourself as not being a leader. Everyone is a leader. I mean, little Brady coming in here uh, is a leader. Everyone is a leader. So I want you to think of yourself as that leader. This book is, um, it's, it's provoking, it's insightful. It, it, it really outlines that a family and an organization is a leader. So if you, if you are in a family setting, you are a leader in some way, shape or form. If you are in an organization, you're a leader in some way, shape or form. So ask me about this book, Getting Out of the Box. It's really quite interesting. So I just wanted to share that with you. I love it. I love that you always share these little tidbits and yeah. words of wisdom and also the inspiration that you bring to the, everyone at the culture and to the meetings. So thank you, Sylvia. You're All right. Any last words before we conclude today? Um, other than that, the slides, I think there was like one more slide. I can't remember what it was. Oh, that, that was it. I'm sorry. Just be grateful for yourself. Be grateful for what you have, everyone. Um, in terms of, in terms of you know what's going on, and there's, there's a lot of things changing, and, and especially if we go into a war, or things get worse. Um, so I just, I just want to make sure you guys are are definitely taking advantage of your license. Make sure you're going out and talking real estate with everyone. So many people want to hear your opinion. Okay but no one's going to remember. You're not going to create any differences or change anyone's lives if you don't broadcast and share and, and announce and reach out to people, okay? It's very important. After the, during this pandemic, so many people have lost connections. And so many people have, have disconnected from all the groups and networking and events that they've been uh, attending. You be the glue of your group. You be the one reaching out and extending a warm how is everything going? How's your family? How's business? How's life? And reach out because that's how you're going to build a stronger business in the future. All right. That's it, everyone. Thanks for staying. I love you guys. Bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.